Ladies and gentlemen, in this Red Gaming Tech.com video, I'm going to be talking about the PlayStation 4 as new specifications and indeed new development kits are being sent around to various developers around the world. This new development kit is replaces the old one, which apparently was just a graphics card. This new one com is complete with Blu-ray support and also a fairly good uh, specification set. We're going to be looking at an AMD A10 APU and also either 8 or 16 gigs of RAM as well as a Blu-ray drive as I've already said and 256 a gigabyte hard drive is going to be basically the standard spec. The whole idea of this is pretty much Sony want the console to be able to run the games at 1080p in 3D. Now obviously if you guys remember back in the days of when the Xbox 360, just prior to its launch, Microsoft did a conference and they were boasting that all games, all games were going to be 720p and minimum. And while that was true at the start of the console's life, obviously as the games became progressively more challenging, in other words, they become later and the graphics improved, there had to be some sacrifices made, and one of the sacrifices that usually has to be made on consoles was the resolution. And basically, suffice to say, some games went down to 600p. So I have no doubt in, say, four or five years' time on play at PS3, or sorry, PS4, we're probably going to be saying the same thing. Obviously, consoles do upscale, however. That's one of the reasons that, for example... I'm sure many of you guys know this, but I'll just go through it anyway. That's one of the reasons the Xbox 360 does have 1080p. Many of the games do not render internally at 1080p, but they're just upscaled. And generally speaking, it does a better job than what your television may do. The PS4 is also going to be supporting Wi-Fi and Ethernet connectivity, as well as HDMI out. So no surprises there, just like the PS3. But the biggest one is going to be with the UI. Apparently there's going to be some major changes. The idea is that they want the whole thing to be integrated much better into the gaming experience. So for example, you will be able to purchase DLC or new content without actually having to quit the game. One of the issues that I think many gamers have is the PlayStation 3's um, operating system didn't integrate into the gaming experience quite as well as Xbox 360's. Not to say that Xbox 360's was perfect or anything like that. But I think we can all agree that you know the next consoles could do a little bit better job. So who knows what's going to be happening there. There's also no details whatsoever on the system's controller. As we all know, the PlayStation controller has been fairly similar all this time. With the familiar square, triangle, X and circle being, well, let's just put it this way, a hallmark to the PlayStation franchise. And of course, analog sticks were added on the PlayStation 1, and since then it hasn't really changed, with the DualShock controller being announced, of course, to a PS2 and so forth. Whether they're going to be changing this and adding any screens, or going, say, the Wii U route, it's hard to say right now. Personally, I'm hoping they kind of don't. I am very hoping that they continue with how they are. I know some people might have issues with this, and some people absolutely love the Wii U controller. I'm personally not one of them, but that is down to my own personal preferences rather than anything else. So it's going to be quite interesting news for the PC and console gaming community. Well, why do I say the PC gaming community? Well, one of the issues at the moment we're having for PCs, of course, is quite simply that consoles at the moment just are not powerful enough to really handle what um, you know a PC is really capable of. So obviously, because many of the games are ports, it could, in theory at least, improve quite a lot of the graphical issues that PC gamers are having. In other words, complaining about lower textures, and in theory as well, it'll make life for developers a lot easier. In other words, for developers, they don't have to worry about, okay, well, you know what, these group of guys can have very high resolution textures, but say the PS3 and 360 cannot because it just doesn't have the memory. So, for example, the Xbox 360 and PS3 both have 512 megabytes of RAM. Okay, they both distribute it differently um, due to their designs, but there you have it. So, anyway, um, just how powerful the system is going to be in terms of its actual performance is speculation at the moment um i've no doubt there's going to be some number crunching done but just how accurate it's going to be after all these aren't even the finalized specs it could end up that for example sony say you know what it's not really cost effective for us to have eight gigs of ram it might be more cost effective for us to go four i would be surprised if that's the case i personally don't really think four is going to be needed or sorry used because operating system um sizes are increasing 
and what you have to do is look at the you know the size of windows for example and obviously this is more, a lot more streamlined than that that's one of the benefits of course of a fairly closed operating system in that you don't have to worry about print drivers for example so anyway this has been a fairly quick video hopefully you guys have found it interesting and definitely let the speculation start personally i would not be surprised if we see some more concrete evidence and obviously the rumors are going to continue um it'll be interesting just to see which of the two consoles in other words xbox 720 or ps4 is actually going to win out in the power stakes obviously at the moment we've got the ps3 and 360 that are roughly even and i do say roughly i mean you know within near as damn it the ps3 is generally speaking a little bit better with some more complicated cpu intensive tasks but of course the 360 definitely has a slightly slight edge in terms of the graphics card because it's slightly better so we'll just have to see what happens of course the 360 is a little bit easier to program for which does make developers happy so we'll have to see what happens in the end and anyway hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video i will hopefully see you guys around if you could subscribe that would be great i will of course be covering all the latest news on both the ps4 and xbox 720 so take care of yourselves bye for now